Hi again, everybody. All right. For those who don't recognize this, you're looking at the back of a welder. We'll be back. I'm going to get some more stuff here. Ah. Uh, So, make a long story short, I'm fixing this thing from a problem that I could have hypothetically lived with up to a limited point. That is, <laughs> I ended up with only one heat setting on the thing. And that is because, unfortunately, it had a problem internally. Now, I, I could have left it that way. And while a lot of people would say I should have, I'm like, hell no. Not me. I'm not about to leave a problem unsolved. Well, somebody say, you could have done it without breaking it. Hypothetically, yeah, maybe you could have. I was thinking to myself, how could I have done this without breaking it? But in my case, even if I knew in advance, if I knew in advance what the problem was, I could have fixed it before it became the problem it was. But I had to break it to even find out what the problem was to start with. If I knew the, put it this way, if I were serving this, servicing these things all the time, I'd know the answer. I was reading up a forum, and a lot of people, in fact, when I get back to this forum, I'm going to upload this video that you're seeing right now. That way people can see what the actual problem was. And you won't see it right at this moment just yet. But to tell you what it was in rough, the switch assembly here for the selector uh, was defective. Defective by design, really. And they probably at this point have done nothing in the world to remedy it. But, technically there's a real super easy way to remedy it. And they should apply that, and I would advise that they do. That's why I have another reason I'm publishing it this way, so that they'll see it. And uh, it's a simple fix, as far as simplicity goes. It's just not necessarily a cheap fix on their part, since they're a corporation, and of course, naturally, profit motive is more important than product quality. However... I'm going to say it anyway in case they want to keep their reputation a little longer and not be kicked to the curb for knowingly doing something stupid uh, when everybody caught them. At, well, if <laughs> the bunny wabbit caught them anyway. I caught them at it. And uh, simply put, this problem would not have occurred had they made this uh, switch post out of better materials and it would have been super, so super easy to do so. I know why they made it the way they did and I don't want to hear the argument from them because I say bullshit. Because their argument will be is, is they made it this way because it was safest, best way to do it. And that's not true. It's just the cheapest way to do it. There are several equally safe and superior ways of doing it. And I will tell you right now. All I have to do to make this product prime quality. To do it right. To do this actual application properly. Is to replace this nylon switch in the front.
with a Teflon uh, cast in metal uh, Teflon coated um, metal core or well the reason a lot of people think that carbon fiber is conductive yeah carbon fiber is conductive uh, a really high temperature like six seven hundred six hundred fifty degree I've seen them filled epoxy uh, some kind of high temp epoxy would potentially do with uh, a high temperature non-conductive fiber I'd say fiberglass but it's brittle and I really hate dealing with fiberglass because not only is it brittle but it's like it's believe it or not it's a carcinogen a lot of people will tell you that but fiberglass is a carcinogen it will get in your lungs and it will cause cancer cause lung cancer very little they, they being big corporations covered that up for a long time it's not exactly like silicosis But it's very similar. Basically, what happens is, is that there's the, the silicon dioxide plus its uh, additional, because it isn't just pure, there's different other materials in there and sometimes there's lead, because a lot of glass has lead. Some of it has strontium, some of it has other uh, materials in it specifically for the purpose of modifying those properties to get the kind of uh, glass. It is glass, you know, but they had to use certain additives to give it like toughness and pliability and stuff kind of a predecessor, predecessor to Gorilla Glass in a way Silver piece broke, uh, floated off. Didn't break, it just floated. It's too much adhesive quality to the flux, and the uh, end result was is my little piece of silver floated off because it stuck to the flux. <laughs> well, flux it all. Oh, I'm about to lose it. Well, at least it dropped on something I can handle it with. It's blessed that way. Alright, so, <laughs> we got that all fluxed up, um, I've been accused of being a flux up for years, <laughs> I just solder on, I mean soldier on.
Now, in theory, hopefully, I've got just enough tin in there. Now, I admit, tin's a low melting point solder, so that may come loose. We just got to make certain that it doesn't get that hot in the future. And I flash dab that afterwards to clean off the oxides. Because that's the problem with this stuff. It'll chloride while you've got it there, but when it burns off, it results in oxides, and you don't want that on your final product. So, let me get a smaller pair of pliers. In fact, I think I'm going to get a vice grip just for the simple... Well, I don't even know if a vice grip's... I, hang on. I may have the perfect clamping tool for this. It, it, if it's here in this box. Ah, it's at the house. I was hoping I had the perfect clamping tool here, but it's at the house. So, what I will do instead is I will try Now, before I can do anything, I'm going to try to I'm going to cool this real fast, and I'm going to try to see if it'll, if it'll at least hold on long enough for me to hang on to it with my hand, or if it'll pull right off easy. Because, uh, you'd be know real quick. Oh, wait a minute, I got something I can cool it with real fast, and it'll clean it real fast, too. There's a little bit of... In fact, let me see how this carb, carb cleaner stuff does on it, if anything. May not do anything, but it might. No, I'm busy not doing it in front of the camera. Take something off of it. I don't know what. I see stuff turning yellow. Alright, well. It's definitely cool enough to handle. And it's still on there. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly, and I'm going to see if I can slightly clean that out a little bit with the drill bit. Okay, alright, what I'm going to try to do, if possible, is I'm going to find if nearest to right at this exact odd size drill bit, preferably a couple thousandths diameter larger. And I don't even know what diameter this is. Um... But I'm going to start, I'm just going to start with drill bits that are of a general, let me put this down here. Uh, 
There we go. Okay, it's larger than that. It's about that size. That, that's 31 64 So, a half inch won't fit in it. 31 64 technically won't fit in it either, but I think I can cut it out that much and that'll give it just a clearance. I want to see if this other bit right here is somewhere compromising in between. No, it's way too loose. So 30, it, it's it's larger than, uh, can't read that, 15 30 seconds but smaller than 31 16. Let me see if I can kind of carve it a little bit with the 15 30 seconds little bit pre-carve it and then I'll come back and carve it a little more if you will the reason I'm cutting this clearance in here at all is intentionally so I can get it larger than the original diameter by just a couple thousands just a couple thousands that way It'll reduce the chances of it happening again so easily. Of course, if I'm not careful, I'll hit that uh, silver piece and knock it off after I've just gone to the issue to try to tin solder it on, which is really pathetic, technically. But that tin solder should have a higher temperature melting point than the heat that this uh, welder will put on those points. Admittedly it's a lower temperature than probably the solder that they first put this on here with. Yeah, sorry about that. If you hear my sneezes echoing, no big deal, they always do. Sometimes it almost echoes like a gunshot. It's like, well, I wish I'd just quit, but now I'm getting I'm getting used to it. <laughs> I'm no longer worried by it, it's just gonna happen. clean that silver surface off a little bit get any of this uh, I really don't want the tin itself in there because if the tin heats up it'll bond to the surface of the it'll, it'll solder itself to the you know what I mean you know, I'll still I'll be in as bad or worse condition then This uh, silver compound is really soft. I gotta be careful how much I sand it, or I'll just sand it away. Sands off pretty easy. But I, it's it, I, it's a sil silver alloy, I believe, rather than pure silver. I think it's a silver copper alloy or some something like that. I'm not an expert on that. I didn't build Lincoln welders. I just destroy them. <laughs> I didn't build it. I broke it. Anyhow, I'm cleaning up all the oxides and corrosion off of it anyhow. So, I'll have to clean the, the post-soldering sludge up a little better with some of that spray cleaner. But get in here and try to use this uh, sanding mesh to uh, sand this contact because this contact got really hot. Somewhere along here, the corrosion. Probably what happened was somebody had it at full power and turned the knob like they weren't supposed to. I don't know. 
I got this thing secondhand. It's an old machine. Got some pretty deep burn marks on there, but if I keep cutting and cutting and cutting away till I get it, I'll make that too uh, thin, and I'll be taking off a lot of the conductivity. And this is a fairly uh, thermally sensitive kind of application, even for copper. You know, I mean, there's different gauges of copper on all these lugs and stuff, but they're based, of course, on the, the net amperes that they're expecting, and that one's supposed to be able to handle the maximum of the 225 amps that this uh, welder is supposed to be able to uh, work at. So therefore I'm going to go ahead and uh, refrain from just grinding that thinner than it. Somebody said, well I'm making this thinner. Although yes I am making this thinner by a couple molecules here and there. Uh, this is going to better See, that's to keep the thing from generating heat. This is not going to affect the heat that much. This is mostly going to affect it should the heat carry on and get high. Is that the... get high. <laughs> uh, if the heat goes up to those kind of temperatures, this will uh, help keep the switch handle, which is broken right now. And that actually, that's what happened is... Too much heat got in here from steadily being welded at high power for long periods of time with no cool down breaks. And I won't tell you that I did the best job of doing it any favors here, because I didn't. I it was a couple times I ran this thing at full power for a long time non-stop. Can't tell you how long because I didn't clock it, but it was multiple hours non-stop of just saturation welding on that uh, on that uh, hydraulic press frame. There's a lot of welding went into that, and there's still a lot more to go. Although when it'll come about, I don't know. On the other hand, though. One difference is, I'm going to put a little of this high temperature axle grease in here, lithium grease, and hope that uh, helps keep oxidation down to a minimum. Because oxides are where you really get your heat. Metal oxides are very low conductive. They're very poor conductors. And you really don't want them in the mix. And that's why a corroded terminal, whether it's iron oxide, copper oxide, silver oxide, not that there is much silver oxide, but there's various, shall we say, tarnishments of silver that contain oxygen out there. But anyhow, what my point is, is you don't want a metal oxide of any kind in your uh, circuit because it's very bad for conductivity. Let me put this drill away and uh, in, in general halides in general are a bad deal uh, because they tend to have bad conductivity, low melting points, and uh, no mechanical strength. So, they really let you down, shall we say. Now I'm trying to get all the particulate garbage, especially the oxide off of the workpiece here. That way, in theory, if not in practice, I'll keep this thing from uh,
having that resistivity in the first place. Now, I've got all these parts here done on this end. I haven't greased anything for a lot of reasons. Well, I gotta wash my hands now before I can go on to the next part. And I gotta wash the parts that I've gotta work on next, which are inside. So I'm gonna bring y'all back inside. This is just gonna sit like this for the moment until we're ready for the next stage. Um, hang on to me. I got a camera and a leg stuck in a, that spool of uh, fence wire there. And then I caught myself on the handle of the three wheel part. Alright. Sorry, I know. Like usual. Flying camera. Hope nobody's offended if I edit that out of the final cut, in which case you won't see it. But, in a way, let's see here. No. This is my collection of various screws. Ah. Uh, Set that aside. Alright, here's the problem. And it looks like, oh, well, no wonder it's thin. Well, actually, I ground the burnt nylon off of it already. And it just has snapped at that point. And the good thing about it snapping so diagonal is that's my alignment. That enables me to keep this in alignment while I'm in the process of drilling it. Although, if you look, I don't know if I can show it. If you press it in place, it's effectively bent. I don't know if I can, let me, oh, hang on, let me flip the monitor around. Even then, because the monitor is so small, I don't know that I can see it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, hang on. Yeah, I, I can't really show it, sorry. Anyhow, I'm going to try really hard to get these lined up really straight with each other. And it's going to be tricky as everything. The only thing I've got to do that with is, is, is V-blocks. And that's going to be a real challenge because it's got to sit upside down. And it's not going to be happy with itself or anything else. Let me get the camera dialed around. Let me see here. And bring the light down. That probably helps a little bit. Yeah, somewhat. Alright, now I gotta arrange these parts. I gotta figure out how to set them in a block. I'm gonna need a bigger block. <laughs> Two is too big of that size, and one is too small. But then the problem I run into is, is this one's so big that I, I got to figure out how I'm going to put clamping pressure properly on it. But I need them to be facing right in line with each other, like so, when I drill them. And it's going to be tricky. So, but I need to put something in here that's like an, a U strip. There are screws on here, so if I had a little U-strap cut for that, I may have to make that, which may actually mean I have to use the other welder to fix this welder. I do not know yet. Or, oh, that may be too long, too. Hang on, I'll just say maybe I could use... I'm trying to figure out a way to use something like this to hold... Uh, No, it's too long. Crud. If it were like uh, just a little shorter, I could stick it on there and it'd be perfect for that. I've got a smaller piece of pipe maybe, or I can cut them smaller. Uh, crud. I mean, I have to walk around so I don't move the camera again.
The thing is, I've got to be able to clamp both of them together. At the same time, or they won't work. Oh, uh, gotta walk around again. just exactly short enough, I don't know. If not, I can kind of notch in this. This is just pipe. I don't care what happens in There's no critical need for more pipe. Yeah. Although, there might be a piece of PVC pipe I can kind of section out that might help too. Although, I kind of doubt it because the way that's made and I need to line them up I'd have to grind this uh, off somewhat to do that, and that might not be a good idea. Uh, hard to check. Let me go get, see if I can get that piece of PVC pipe I'm thinking of, and if, if so, maybe it'll work. Go for it. Unfortunately, I don't know where it's at. It may be at the house. Uh, 
Okay, never mind, I found it. It's back in the back. Wow. Talk about a perfect fit. Not even for sure if that's real or not. It's kind of not. However, I think I can fudge it for one reason. I can actually heat this up a little bit and shrink it. I will have to cut this back some to make it work though. As much as I hate to do that. So, you get to see me put the grinder over here again. It's already over here because it's using it over here. Set these up. in here a couple minutes ago working on this same piece but I say a couple minutes ago probably like half an hour ago right now I lose track of time real quick I'd say real quick but I don't know if it takes me a long time or not because I done forgot and if you lose track of time you don't know if it's a quick loss of track of time or not Ironic, isn't it? It's kind of like when I say to people, I've had a bad memory since I don't know when. I can't remember. Alright, I'm trying to not crush the body of this thing, but at the same time, I'm trying to kind of. Obviously, if you crush the body of the machine, you ruin it. But. Now, got to hijack the charger from. Uh, oh no, I can use this somehow. Yeah. All right. Thankfully. I was using a different power outlet for this machine, so I don't have to... Because that camera does not like being unplugged for very long. The batteries too bad on it, oil. They're bad batteries to start with, for sure. Uh, i to be careful doing this so I don't... Uh, not knocked out of my hand because this blade spins up and if it kicks then I'll end up with more holes in my hand. Come on. I'm going to use a scrap of metal that's here for a lever to pry the switch in the on position. It's a little too fast. Ignore this piece of metal came from now.
could have a saw I can cut the difference of that out with a little bit. Try to do here. There we go. Now, once I have them like this, and I gotta keep them like this. And the problem is, I can't just squish down here and and, and uh, lose my drill center, which I don't have haven't established yet. However, first thing I'm gonna do for well, first next first thing I'm gonna do is get the grinder out of the way. vertical perpendicular into the hull and job. And that I may be able to do with a few smaller B blocks, I hope. Oh, talk about just barely. But I'm gonna need a support block to burn through because otherwise it's gonna fall out of the bottom. So let me get a little support block to burn through. Never tried this before. Maybe I'll try some foam. Foam actually appears to fit right in that gap too. If it does, that's actually quite perfect, I think find out the hard way, of course. One thing about foam, because it's compressible, shall we say it's kind of forgiving to marginal errors. Now, before I get too far, I need to, I'm going to clean this a bit because my hands are covered in crap. And that kind of keep me from doing what I need to do next.
I'll be back. I'm gonna go rinse this off. Okay. The reason I need this really clean, in fact, one thing is I also need to have uh, calipers over here. Okay, now I gotta use my brain more than I'm used to. This is 625 thousandths, 5 eighths of an inch. That means I need 375 thousandths? Is that 5 sixteenths? No, that's 3 eighths. Three hundred twelve thousandths. Three hundred twelve and a half. Then okay. Yeah. What is stuff? Mighty scratch resistant. Well, these tips have just gotten dull over the years. I don't even know if I'm on camera. I see it. I'll have to do. I don't even know if that's visible in the camera or not. I get my sunglasses off. Yep. Very visible. Interestingly, so is the hole I punched. Strange. Really cool. Wish I could see as well as that camera does. I mean, the, yeah. That'll have to be close enough.
Yeah, I'm going to put this caliper away because I won't very need it anymore for the rest of the job. Thankfully, I do not actually need to clamp that super, super tight. So it's all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to spot drill it. The reason I'm spot drilling it is because I actually don't have a way other than that to start this. Because number one, This chuck will not actually accept a drill bit the size that this job needs. Let me put this out of the way see. and I'll set this over here. Especially since if I actually sprayed that I'd lose my point. And so I better set it aside so let him do that. Well, I will need to clean that some more before I do the next phase, which is flying epoxy. This phase, where I'm just drilling holes to set a screw, I need to keep my little finder. I should probably go get my little tiny flashlight, or Paul's somewhat larger flashlight, so I can get right down on it. Let me see how close this is. Yeah, I'm still going to have to lift the table some. Yay, I get more of that massive machinist exercise. Of, well, I don't have to go very far, thankfully. I really don't have to go even an inch, but I'll go an inch. It's ten wraps. I think. One of ten wraps might be two inches. But anyhow. I don't want to get too close because I may have to go ahead and figure out a way to put a drill bit in here of the right size anyhow. And I'd rather not have to uh, go down after I've gone up. It's like, yeah, that wasn't good. Now the other thing is, I can kind of touch off of here the way true center because there's a casting spur, which you call a witness mark otherwise. Uh, pretty much on the money there. Yep, touches off there. Alright, we're in low range, which, because of the fact that this might do all sorts of unfavorable things, I'm going to use low range. One thing I didn't do, double check that this is tight. Alright, it is. Close it Alright, 
That doesn't do very well. Hang on a second here. Doesn't seem to be happy with that. It could be a dull bit. Well, let me see how it does in high range. say so never get lost, but just not yet. Alright, now, going on direction. I am hoping I can get a smaller bit in here. I'm going to start with a 1 16th if it'll chuck it. If it won't, we'll go up one at a time until we get to it. Alright, it says it'll chuck a 1 16th. The reason is, it's nylon. Anybody that knows nylon knows it doesn't like to be worked. It's got a very low thermal efficiency, therefore it likes to get hot and swell, and then you've got a thermal kerf. And if you don't know what a thermal kerf is, I suggest you look at it. I will just say this much, it's a bad thing. Sorry if you're not seeing anything, it's not intentional, it's just the fact that I may have the camera in the wrong direction and on the other hand I've got to put my head down here so I can see where I'm going. These wobbly bits give me an excess curve anyway. Because this is the upper part, 
don't know if I should go 764s because that'll kind of get in me if I need that much. I think I'll stay with 5 three thirty seconds for a minute. But now I'm to a problem where I actually have to put the parts together and then drill them. And that's going to be fun. Because I have yet to figure out how I'm going to do that. And that didn't even go all the way through. Heh. Oh well. That'll be okay as long as I, I have enough. I have enough for a bushing essentially. Now I've got to now I've got to ensure that these things stay in line with each other. How the hell am I gonna do that? I do not know. But, I don't know if what I'm trying to do is visible on the camera. Just barely clears. But, well, no guarantee that'll stay in place, though. Now, I got a lot more questions and answers at this point. I could try that. Boy, there ain't no guarantee, but you know, I still need an elevator. Well, the biggest problem is, it's not that I don't have clamping floors. I don't have tall enough jaws for this. Well, this is going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to think this through. I need big, tall jaws for this. I may have to fashion some jaws for this. This may be a bit of a... You know, I'm going to have to pause here because I am kind of stuck on how I'm going to make tall jaws for this. And I'm going to need them. They'll probably be wood, though. And the reason they'll be wood is because A, I don't have the right or enough metal to do the job, and B, for a one-time use job like this, it's way not worth it. And C, I don't really need that much force to, uh, I guess I should leave that right there so I know what I'm looking at and thinking about. Otherwise, I'll walk away and get, come back and go, what in the hell is I doing? Okay, so I'm going to have to pause this right here and come back after I figure out how I'm going to make jaws. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some kind of pieces of wood that I have somewhere that might just barely, barely do the trick. Really, I only need one. I only need a lone high jaw. The other side can be what it is. But I need one set of high jaws because I need enough to apply force all the way to the top. This applies force all the way to the top and it can rest all the way to the bottom. Although there is the issue that I still got to put this underneath it because otherwise it falls through the bottom. I think I'm going to keep that. I don't even know what it came out of, to be honest with you. Let me give a scrap of dirty, more dirty paper towel. I'll be going there and clean that. Oil and scum out of the bottom of the vice there so that I don't monkey up my brand new toy, my home 
foam uh, park stop or tool stop, I wouldn't call it tool stop, but a park stop anyway, park rest. That's what will be resting on there is the part itself. So this will go down in that cavity. Again, I'm brushing out a lot of the crud just so this it'll eventually it'll wear its way through this little piece of rubber foam. I don't know what that came off of. I probably knew it one time, but it's been long enough that it's been just laying around on the floor for long enough. I don't know. But I do know that being a sponge piece of foam rubber, it should be just what I need to set things in position. In fact, I think I'm going to set this or drop stuff or break it or do something else harmful. I'm going to ruin something. Just give me a minute and I'll wreck it all. Perfect. Absolutely textbook. Perfect. Well, not really, but textbook passes for what we need. Worst problem is, it turns out I need this thing facing down, so it may not be so perfect. But still. I need I need this like this and I need this like that and I'll probably need this like so and then I need a piece in here. I can flip it around the other way, but it's harder to do it facing the way because I can't see what I'm doing. So it'll be facing this way. I get a piece of plywood or something, make myself some temporary jaws, I, and then when I get back, I don't know what to do with my big shop notebook. I say big, my shop notebook. It's not all I think. Well, I'm going to get it and I'm going to try to draw something up real quick in my head there while I've got it, once I find it, whether it's here or up at the house. And then when I come back, I'll have it in my head so I can go ahead and rig that up and uh, square it, drill it, and hopefully it'll be where it belongs. No promises, though. I may have to wrap a wrap of tape or Teflon tape around that to get that snug too. I've got Teflon tape right here. I got electrical tape, but I said I'm afraid electrical tape will actually be too big. And plus it'll be really hard to get out of the thing whenever it's in there, so this Teflon tape will come apart no matter what. I suppose if you really wrench on it it'll anything will get out, but I don't want to damage anything, so. We'll play it by ear. If, if anything else, I can always cut the form apart if it gets jammed in there too tight. I'll just cut this piece of PVC pipe all the way through, and it'll. Only thing is, is I gotta be careful not to cut into my part and damage it. So, all right, we'll see you when I'm back and ready to take some decisive action on this after I think it through.